Welcome back, fellas. Frank Macaluso here from Garageaholic. We are going to be reinvigorating our E31 S85 swap. I don't have a timeline for finishing this. I'm going to continue to chip, out, chip away at this over the course of 2019 and into 2020. Uh, I want to wrap, I want to kind of give you guys a sense of where we are with this swap and what we need to do still. Um, I know that it looks like it's in shambles, but the good thing about this swap is that the engine and drivetrain have been completely placed. Drive shaft is taken care of. The shifter linkage is taken care of. The headers are taken care of. We need to work on, in the immediate future, our steering column, our control arm mounting locations, and finally, our, our steering. Okay, so those, those basic things need to be done before we can really kind of like start to work on the things within the engine bay like AC and power steering routing and, you know, air intake and kind of that fun stuff, you know, brakes. So, brakes, you know, kind of need brakes. But we're going to get back onto the bandwagon in this E31 S85. I want to complete this thing in mid-2020. There's going to be some funding concerns, so I'm going to do the best I can to try to get this thing completed and looking awesome. Uh, with the funds that I have and the time that I have to do it. So, anyway, um, let's take a quick look and see what we need to do in the near-term future. Cut up and a new one welded in right here. It's only tacked for now, but it is a little bit of clearance here in between the oil pan and the subframe. We need to make sure that there is enough clearance. There will be more welding, there will be more gusseting, tons more welding in order to get this front subframe to be completely integrated into its mounting locations uh, along the frame rail. Uh, the power steering um, rack, it's an E46 rack that has been, it's a right hand drive rack, it's been flipped upside down and put on in order to get the tie rods here to uh, that are that are typically rearward. Most tie rods on on, on a steering uh, on a steering application for uh, uh, rack and pinion steering is actually in front of the axle. We're, this is actually behind because the original steering s system was a uh, it's a it's a steering drag link system with a box. Okay, the box is mounted up there, and it's got a big drag link that goes across. And and as a result, the uh, the arm was beh positioned behind the axle, so we needed to figure out how to accommodate that. So we got that figured out. I did that back in uh, back uh, early uh, late last year. So that's already been taken care of. The oil pan has been cut in order to make room for the power steering rack itself. The exhaust headers here are basically uh, installed, and there's room for wiggle there so the exhaust is going to be super easy from here on out it's two and a half inch we're going to go an x pipe here it's going to come back to dual resonators and the two the dual resonators is going to go out to a dual muffler system on the back so it's going to be pretty nice it's going to be quiet but i do want to have cutoffs here because i love the sound of the s85 um, without any muffler at all so we're going to end up doing that as well we have to continue to final weld our transmission mount we have our Garagistic 88 poly mounts here, which have been really handy. They're really good. I think it's going to turn out really well. And, <clears throat> and as I stated earlier, what we need to do is we need to beef up our control arm loca mounting locations. Here is the, the thrust arm, lower control arm, or actually it's the upper control arm rather. Um, we're, what we're going to do is because there was a subframe that basically went across this whole thing and the oil pan is now in that way and the exhaust headers and everything is in the way. It used to go like right here. That is no longer. We're actually going to be mounting some metal bracing here and attaching it to the actual frame rail so we can get this piece in its existing stock location to be mounted to the frame rail. Very important that this is strong and the bracing is, uh, is, is really, really strong. So we got it on both sides. We're going to do that. There's some more spatial concerns here. We're going to remove the headers in order to do that. So that's going to take care of that. And we also need to work on the steering column. The steering column here, um, I don't think you can see it very well. You can see that there's a steering knuckle there that goes on the output of the steering rack and it's going to a three quarter inch double D shaft. There are some clearances with the exhaust header that need to be modified and updated. And as you can see into the steering column that we need to get an eyelet, there's an eyelet up in there. Uh, I can't really see it too well, but that needs to be mounted to the frame in order to keep the steering column uh, uh, constrained. So we got to work on that too. Once that is all done, then we can bring the car down. We can start working on uh, some integration in the front. We can work on 
getting the accessories plumbed, uh, air conditioning, power steering, cooling, uh, radiator plumbing, and, uh, and then we can really start uh, making some progress with the swap because I want to paint it. I plan on painting it the same color as it is right now, which is a Diamond Schwartz Black 181, but it's also the same color as the E30 Touring, a project that I con conveniently have running in parallel. So I'm gonna be running both of those together and hopefully I can get a bit of a discount on paint because I'm gonna be doing two full repaints in parallel. Are you guys tired of hearing me talk yet? Good, let's get to work. So this is what I plan on doing with the upper control arm mount with this uh, semi-circular piece of three inch tubing that I made with this end cap. It's gonna end up getting welded in just like this. It's gonna be sitting just on the outside, something like this. Want to make sure that there's no fitment issues with the header and there are none. It's just sitting there loose, but I think I got plenty of clearance. This is going to end up getting test fitted a number of times. We're gonna fit it, we're gonna make some minor adjustments, we're gonna make some cuts, grind things away in order to get this to fit perfectly, and then we're gonna weld it in. They're also gonna be welding in some additional bracketry that's gonna go right up along the frame rail for extra strength. And we're gonna do that on both sides. But for the purposes of the video, we're just gonna do this one side just to show you how it looks. assembly it's completely bolted in right now okay this is a 22 millimeter bolt using the stock bolt I ended up putting a flange and welding that flange on because it was the exact diameter of the bolt that actually came from the existing subframe so I'm going to be reusing that and basically this is a hemisphere that base that, that's kind of like just just it's bolted in right now and the intent is that it gets welded to the existing frame structure there's going to be some additional bracing that's going to connect this to the frame rail in, times, in a type of a triangular fashion to allow the thrust force to be placed somewhere without it interfering with the headers or anything else. So that is what we're planning on, that's what we're looking to do here on this, on this bracket. I think that it's placed perfectly. I think that it allows me to get it in, install and remove. It'll be able to handle the thrust. I will, might, might need to you know, uh, adjust this bracket a little bit in order to uh, help to remove and install this if I need to. But these, this is a boltable piece. And that's the important thing is that this is boltable and it can just remove the rest of this, this structure here, and this guy will all be one big piece part of the, uh, part of the frame. So that's the intent here. There's no issue with the exhaust headers and um, we just have a couple more pieces to, to fab and I think we'll be in good shape. So super excited. All right, so I've made my start off of the, car of the cardboard templates. And what I wanna do is I wanna cut this out um, I'm gonna use this stock. This is just basically quarter inch carbon steel stock. This is really, really butch. I have this to use as a round template because the the, car, the actual cardboard stencil is gonna actually go over that, which mimics what's actually on the car. So I'm just gonna put that aside. That's actually for the driver's side, but I'm using it as a template for the passenger side. And I wanna cut these guys out, test fit it on the car, and then I wanna, tr once it works, I wanna trace these guys out and then tack weld.
pieces done, mocked up, marked up on the frame rail, ready to sand down and weld up. just about does it for the gusseting on the upper control arm for the passenger side. I'm not going to show you the driver side because it's just the same as the passenger side. I have a lot more grinding, a lot more welding, a lot more gusseting to do, but I wanted to just place it. I wanted to know that I did not have any interference with things like the headers and the steering rack and the other things. It's very important to make sure you don't have those interferences. So I got that all set up. This is basically 20% in, but you know what? It's in and it's not coming out. Same for the subframe. Everything is uh, tacked in, but it's not going anywhere. I do need to gusset all this up. That's basically just going to be like two days of just pure welding, essentially. So anyway, guys, this is just about it for the E31 S85. Welcome back. We are going to get this thing on the road in as many episodes as it takes to finish this damn thing. So thanks a lot for sticking with me, guys. I probably have soot and crap all over my face and my hair's messed up, but I don't care. That's the garage holic way. Uh, we are done with the upper control arm mount on the E31 S85. I'm gonna do the other side at another time. Guys, if you like the video content, if, it, if it's good, if you're learning something, then please hit the like button, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, this channel is meant to teach you guys how to do something that might be a little bit more complicated than you think might be a little bit uh, overbearing or intimidating. I can show you that it's actually not as bad if you just take it step by step and approach each problem as an individual issue that needs its own specific solution. Guys, I got, I'm going to be doing the E31 S85 and the E30 N54 that you see right there in parallel. I'm going to be doing them both together. I'm going to be doing uh, probably staggering the videos in some way, shape, or form. Uh, whatever one I feel like doing at the time, I will end up chipping away at. So, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for more activity going on here at the shop. It's always great to have you. I love the comments. Keep them coming. Thanks.